Evening all. Right, this impromptu blog is about one thing. Uh, it's about the Black Magic Press conference live stream that happened just a few moments ago. Ordinarily, I never film from here. This is my own pit at home. Um, but if you've seen any of the things that I've been involved with over the last few years, you'll know I'm, I'm quite a big fan of Black Magic stuff. And we've been using their switches, cameras, and all sorts. And a lot of it is in the background here. There's a, an A101ME up on the shelf. There will be a 2ME. There's a couple of pocket cameras and all sorts of other bits and pieces around. So when, when Black Magic make an announcement that generally isn't at showtime as well, I usually wait for NAB for that. Um, we're going to tune in and listen. So we did. Uh, and about 2,000 other people did, which is maybe, I, I don't know what I was expecting in the way of numbers. Anyway, it was a good amount. So I thought I'd give you a bit of a rundown and first thoughts on some of the things that were announced. Now, if you're a cinematographer, if you're um, a commercial producer or anything like that, this probably doesn't appeal to you. There are other videos out there for you. This is for you if, well, really Black Magic put it, or Grant Petty put it quite nicely when he said that this, the products they're talking about today were for the evolving face of television. And if you work in TV like I do, or in web broadcasting as I do, you'd notice there's been a hell of a lot of changes. And Blackmagic's products haven't really, aside from their cost, really shown much uh, change for that. Anyway, that's all changed now. We'll, we'll get on to that. I'll probably split this video up into a number of different chunks, but we'll see how my waffling goes. Anyway, today I, and if I look sunburnt, by the way, I am sunburnt. Uh, it's, uh, that'll come out in a video in a couple of weeks' time, but I've been off testing the Mavic Pro and the Osmo, which I'm filming on now. Um, but the, the first thing that uh, Grant announced was the new Blackmagic TV studio. Now, if any of you, if you guys are into switching at all, you will know about this product. It's always been about $1,000, about £750. Uh, and is a really good solid starter switcher. It gives you most of the functionality you would find in a professional switcher. Um, and, and really, I'm doing it down by saying it's not professional. It is professional. I've used it many times myself. And most of the things that I do switching, I could do with a, a TV studio. But there are a number of things that have been sort of holding it back. And indeed, the other switches, the 1ME that I'm using and the 2ME that I'm using, a couple of things that hold them back as well. That They're all locked into 1080i and don't do 1080p. Now, all of the switches you can buy today for Blackmagic, so the ME2, the 4K Production, the 4K Studio, uh, whatever they are, they all do 1080p. These ones don't, and I've never upgraded those for a number of reasons that... By the time it gets out to somewhere, I can do that myself. Um, but the new TV studio has moved away from this, this, this form factor. And what they've done is make it into well, a beautiful bit of kit, really. But they've added this functionality of shooting and recording 1080p, which many cameras, well, nearly all cameras do these days. Um, there's a few things that, are, that makes that really interesting and cool. Um, Hell, I'm, I'm waffling on a bit now. We all know what 1080p is, right? But they've kept it, the unit at the same price, and you no longer need to plug your ATEM into a network or router or however and connect it via your controller. You could control this straight from the panel on the front. I'll put some pictures up on the screen to show you what I mean. But for a little, uh, I think it's a Teradex Mini rack size unit, uh, you've got a, a switcher which does way more than the old switcher did. I mean, I made some notes here. Uh, it's got proper audio inputs now, which the last one didn't have. You can operate it without a computer, so all of a sudden you've gone from a flight case type thing like that to just, well, you can carry the unit by itself. Um, it has, the old te television studio had four HDMI inputs and four SDI inputs, but you couldn't use them all at the same time. You kind of had to choose. This has now got four HDMI and four SDI, same as before, but they're all active. You can use them all. That's really cool. Um, the DVE in there as well. Uh, if any of you use, use the TVS, that will that will work. Uh, auxiliary out for the first time. Auxiliary out is really useful for a bunch of different things. Uh, one thing I might use, I'm just trying to think of what I've used it for recently. Well, the auxiliary outs would be used for driving screens with other graphics on or 
if you're going to send your mix straight back into the room, you can record a version without some of the graphics on, for example. But AUX has had loads of uses. Uh, what else have we got? Built-in talkback. Really cool. I'm not going to go into that now, but if you are using the studio cameras, then built-in talkback is really good. Saves you another unit that you have to go and buy. The media pool... All the media pool is what it is on an ATEM. You can carry 20 uh, still images, I think, on a TV studio. You can do the same on this one. However, on this new TV studio, you can actually store them on the unit. So you don't need the computer to bring them back to life. It has its own internal memory, if you will, that will store your footage. So you can set it up before you go and send it out to somebody, and it's, it should power up and be all good to go. The bane of my life with ATEMs is... Uh, these things, the big bricks that they come with, uh, this one's the one for the 2ME, I mean it's enormous, the, uh, as a, well, I haven't got a comparison, but you, that's about the size of two pocket cinema cameras. Um, they're expensive and they blow up, and they've got these kind of weird connectors on the end, but anyway, power supply's built in now, so you just plug a kettle lead straight in and you're away. Uh, audio meters. Blackmagic have upgraded software for all of the switches, and generally when they do an update, all the stuff works across all the switches. However, on the television studio, they've never managed to get audio meters. This, this is a real pain. They've fixed it now, all done. So you get audio meters. The actual front panel, if, you, if you're brand new to mixing uh, and switching, then it's really intuitive. It's a really nice way of learning. And what I'd actually really like to see is a software virtualization of that panel for other uh, for all the other ATEM switches as well so if you're putting a, a new you want to train somebody in the in the basics of switching then that would be a really nice way to to start it also does a B switching which um, I, I don't really know anybody who does that but anyway whatever um, what they have done though and the only thing that isn't there that used to be there is you used to be able to plug a TV studio into your Windows PC and record H.264 straight out of the unit. Now, the H.264 wasn't much use, so they've got rid of that. Um, and they've, they've brought out another product, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, the new TV studio, uh, rather sort of amazingly for Blackmagic, is available now, and of course, being Blackmagic designed, uh, I will, will mention, by the way, this is not a paid endorsement. Um, I'm just pretty impressed with what they've brought out in between shows. Uh, it's the exact same price as before which is $995 in pounds uh, well I'll, I'll find something sticking up on the screen for that so that's kind of cool um, will it replace the 1ME there or the 2ME no uh, is it a massive upgrade for the TV studio yes many people use um, the the TV studio as it is with lots of other bits of hardware and software to make it work better we use a uh, a piece of software called ATEM Plus, which which uh, really and they uh, gives you four virtual cameras, or well, as many virtual cameras as you like. But on the TV studio, four virtual cameras. Um, be interested to see if that still works. It should work. Indeed, uh, X keys and whatever you should still work the same. Interesting to see what work we'd have to do to Casper CG to make that work. Um, but we'll have a look and uh, report back to you on that. Um, and that's pretty well it for the TV studio. Well, what I'd really like to know is how how that would be different. I could think of many ways which I would would use this unit, but how it's going to be different to your your live switching environment. What you know, at the moment, you, m many of you who are doing switching probably carry a case something like that one. Um, most of that's not necessary. Any of that actually, that one mostly full of cable there. But you know, what can you do away with once you've got the new TV studio. Well, do let me know in the comments below. Anyway, I've rambled enough for now, so that'll do for this one. Um, probably in the next video, we'll talk about the web presenter. We'll see.